Hey y'all, it's Occam Blazer. I'd like to show you my favorite little kitchen and pantry. This setup is pretty easy to build and avoids diagonal access tricks that some players dislike. It'll keep any amount of food in deep freeze and it uses just a little bit of automation to produce enough calories without occupying all of your cook's time. So let me show you around. Here I've combined the kitchen and the pantry, but they can be built in different locations as you need. Food is produced in the kitchen and stored in this pantry. The deep freeze here holds tiles of sterile gas and a couple of metal tiles. One holds all your raw ingredients and the other has your prepared foods. There's an auto sweeper for each tile, which is the only way to access items stored in the deep freeze. The right hand sweeper takes cooked food and loads it up into this fridge right here. Keep the max mass pretty low, maybe about one cycle's worth of meals. So most of your food is stored in deep freeze. This will go bad if you let it sit around for a while. Also, increase the, the uh, priority of this just a little, to be a little bit more than this freezer here. So the auto sweeper will take food out and load it up. This left hand kitchen auto sweeper has access to the items stored, the raw ingredients here, and the gas range or whatever other cooking building you have. It also accesses this conveyor loader which ships food off into deep freeze. This conveyor loader is set to take anything else that accidentally ends up in the deep freeze uh, from war for whatever reason. I've also got a couple optional auto uh, conveyor loaders. This one here takes uh, food, prepared food, that your dupes will drop after they've been eating for some reason or whatever. Any prepared food that lies around the map. In this case, it's just barbecue. Make sure you have allow manual use checked and sweep only unchecked. There's also this conveyor loader over here. Same, allow manual use, unchecked sweep only. And this is for your raw ingredients that dupes find just as they're running around. They'll take any raw ingredients and they'll get shipped over to the deep freeze. Storage is kept in deep freeze by a hydrogen loop cooled by a thermoregulator. That's pretty standard stuff. You need access to liquids that won't freeze at minus 30 centigrade, such as crude oil, petroleum, ethanol, and my favorite, uh, naphtha. If you want a uh, build, a walk build of a kind of a robust, hands-off way to uh, melt plastic, uh, check out my plastic melter. Now, since a deep freeze uh, with sterile gas will keep your food fresh forever. You can build an unautomated, unautomated version of this and just have your cook prepare food as raw ingredients come in. I like to batch the process so my cook has more uninterrupted time to do other tasks. Using a little automation, your dupe can prepare edibles in batches while maintaining a reserve stock of accessible calories. So let's walk through it here. In this building, in this build, the refrigerator contains your reserve stock. That represents the minimum amount of calories you want to keep on hand to get you through interruptions like raw ingredient shortages, uh, incapacitated cook, you know dupes like to hurt themselves, power outage, and other minor emergencies. Now, if you have a major emergency, uh, you can keep food on pedestals. Stuff on pedestals live in some magic stasis dimension that never goes, so food never goes bad. I keep a few of these around my base. I keep a lot of these around my base once I get food production up and running. Uh, that way, if something disastrous happens, I can bust into my reserve emergency backup food supply. All right, back to the automation. Food starts coming out of the fridge. So food is produced in the, in the, grain, the range, gets dropped on the floor. <clears throat> the auto sweeper loads it up into the fridge. Once there's enough food on the floor and in the fridge, uh, it will send a, it will stop producing, it will send a signal to stop producing food. Now, the auto sweep will take food out of this fridge and put it into the dupe fridge and then load up. Now the range is still off at this point and once all of this food is gone on the weight plate, and food, the next, the first kilogram starts coming out of the refrigerator, the griddle is enabled and food is produced until the weight plate fills up again. <clears throat> C 
So, all you have to do here is set the fridge limit to the mass of food you want to keep in reserve, and set the weight plate to some sort of uh, intermediary uh, limit that you want to keep on hand. I like to use about three days, see three cycles worth of food. All right, let's take an example. We're running this six dupe colony on barbecue. Uh, and each food item has a different caloric content per kilogram. So refer to the wiki uh, when you're setting this up. Barbecue is 4,000 calories per kilogram. And say let's keep, we want to keep this a reserve of 25 cycles worth of food for six dupes. A, dupe, a regular dupe needs 1,000 calories per cycle. So we need 6,000 calories every cycle to feed each of our dupes. Now for 25 cycles, that's a fresh reserve of 150,000 calories. Looking at that, divide that by 4,000, you get 37.5 kilograms. So I round that up to 38 and set the fridge at that. Now for a buffer of 3 days, that's 18,000 calories or 4.5 kilograms. We set the weight plate to that. Now the circuit is just a memory toggle that turns the grill on when the fridge says it needs more and off when the weight plate says it's gone over the limit. So check out this. Here the fridge is uh, full. It's outputting a green signal. So that means we're not turning the memory toggle on. Let's say we've consumed all the food. And we need to consume a little bit more. Now the fridge says it needs more food. So it's through this NOT gate. The NOT gate sends a green signal to the enable port on the memory toggle. Memory toggle turns on the griddle. We'll set this back to one. Drop that food. And now, Sonny Anderson is making food. It's going to get shipped in. Until this weight plate goes green, there was a batch of food come in. And now the weight plate, when the weight plate goes green, it's going to set the reset and which is going to turn off this memory toggle and turn off the griddle. So that's the soup to nuts tour, if you will. If you want to figure out how to build this in survival on your own, you can stop watching here. But if you want a detailed build walkthrough, follow me over here. All right, first thing we're going to do is lay down some gas pipes. Let's turn off sandbox so you can see this dupes build in action. Um. Gold amalgam's fine. Copper, copper's probably better. We're gonna build that, and then we're gonna build a platform for the liquid and some bottle emptiers, so we can get some naphtha down on this platform right here. Naphtha here. And we can build this. Once this starts overflowing, we can take that, deconstruct that, deconstruct that. And let's start building this in earnest. So we're going to create a temporary corner lock to keep the gases separate. And once this building gets sort of enclosed, I'll show you what's happening here. This little bead of naphtha is the only thing standing in the way from this gas interacting with this gas. And we currently have a, um, a separation because you can only have one element per tile. So now let's start bricking this up. to create a vacuum. And we'll break this in to create a vacuum as well. And then once this is fully bricked in, we'll deconstruct. And we'll have a nice, neat little vacuum.
But first, I'm going to start pumping gas in there so the dupes don't go in there and breathe carbon dioxide out. <clears throat> so we get our gas going. And now we can start deconstructing all these guys. Now it's just a matter of filling in your rails and your automation and all the good things that you need. So this rail is raw ingredients coming in from your farm. This rail is your completed ingredients. We can deconstruct that. We can build our fridge. I need some power. And you don't have to power this fridge right here because it's already in a, in a deep freeze and it's sterile. Then we're going to construct the automation. will have access to and if you don't like that annoying now that everything is built here we can brick that in you see we already have a vacuum here And then we'll finish up this little vacuum, this separation there. There's a vacuum, there's a vacuum, there's your sterile gas. And now, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. This has been Occam Blazer. Thanks, y'all.